so we're continuing in a New Year's series of messages called Holy Habits. Started this just last week. If you weren't with us, you can go back and catch up on that sometime um, this week. We'd love for you to, those are all archived, but we're continuing on in that. And, and holy habits, these are spiritual disciplines for ordinary people. And, and we learned last week that these habits, these are disciplines in God's Word, that they're all from God's Word. These are genuine biblical practices that common, everyday, ordinary people just like you, just like me, in their everyday life, they practice these because they had one consuming desire, and it was simply this, to be conformed to the very character of Christ. That, that was their, their passion, their, and, they, and they gave themselves to that. And they said, we're, we're going to do whatever it takes, and we're going to follow what we need to follow in God's Word. You understand that, right? When we come to Christ, it's so much more than just getting saved. I'm not discounting that. That is an important, important step of faith, and we celebrate that in, in, in every way. But it's more than just getting saved and getting to heaven. It's about being conformed while I'm on this earth, but through the power of the Spirit, and, and as I give myself to these habits and take them up in my life, it's about being conformed to the very character of Christ. Know this. Be reminded, these holy habits, as we're talking about them, are 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 not just rearranging the furniture, you know, temporarily. It's not just kind of cleaning up the outside, all right? This is, these are aimed at nothing less than the total transformation of the heart and life of a man or woman seeking to live in such a way that they please God in every area of their lives. And, and where these holy habits really help us is, is that if we consistently exercise them, they, they can help us, right? They can, they can be so powerful in helping us to replace old destructive habits old patterns of thoughts, actions, toxic attitudes with new, life-giving, God-honoring habits. And that's what we want, and that's what we need so much. It really all comes down to this. You see, God has given us these amazing tools, these, these disciplines that, that he wants us to use so he can transform us more and more into his image and so he can do his mighty work in and through us. But you understand, right? God can give us everything, and in fact, he has. The Bible clearly says God has given us everything we need to live a life of godliness. Okay, that's just right there in black and white. But, but you understand, he could give us all that, but if we don't actually pick it up, if we don't actually use it and, and exercise it, it's not going to be effective at all. And so understand this. This is what it all comes down to. Here's the question you have to answer if you're going to go anywhere with God this year, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Let me just personalize that this morning, all right? Am I willing? Am I willing, God, as I'm here in your presence and I'm hearing your word, am I willing to do whatever it takes to grow spiritually? Am I willing to do whatever it takes to, to not just be a Christian, right, uh, but to be a, a fully devoted, radically obedient to everything I know, radically obedient, spirit-filled follower of Jesus, to, to actually start a new pattern of walking with God. No matter what the past has been like, no matter where I've been with God in the past or what my current relationship with God is like, to start a new pattern with God. Because listen, we don't want to go through the year again and again and again. Many Christians are stuck in this, this really awful pattern of they're on again, they're off again, they're hot, they're cold, they're up and down, they're in and they're out. And, and it's, just, it's just exhausting. And that's not the way Christ has called us to live. And I don't know of any serious Christian who, who, would, who would not agree with me on this. I am, I am tired. I am tired of living. I do not want to ever live a, an average, safe, comfortable, convenient Christian life. I want to walk by faith. Amen? I want to be bold and courageous like he calls me to. And, and that's where these habits really come in and they help us. And so if that's your sincere desire, listen, God wants to help you with that. He wants to empower you. And, and again, he's given us certain disciplines in his word so that he can get us in a posture so that we can put ourselves in a posture, really, so that God can bring all that to reality. Listen, if we're going to be all in with Christ this year, if we're going to experience him do all more than we could ever ask or imagine, listen, we have to have certain disciplines. I know we don't like that word, right? I know none of us are really jazzed up about doing things, right, that, we're not, that we don't feel like doing. Can I, I, let me just give you one example. I mean, about just every morning of my life, uh, at least Monday through Thursday, about every morning, Monday through Thursday, over the last almost two years, and maybe a little more than two years, I have dragged my sorry 46-year-old body out of bed at 545 and come down here to the church and join about six, eight, ten other guys sometimes, and we get down and we work out hard for about an hour. 
And then we pray. And lion chasers. Where's my lion chasers this morning? All right, we got one. There's actually more than that, but Pastor Eli really started this. This was his vision. But anyway, we, we, it takes discipline, right? Because it's cold. It's dark when I get here. It's dark when I leave, and, and, and I'm sore sometimes, and you just don't feel like doing it, right? But, but I'm glad I do it, and it's helping, and we, I, I think it's helping anyway, and I feel better anyway, and I love it. And I, I'm just telling you, it's, it's that way with the spiritual disciplines as well. Sometimes we don't feel like praying. I don't feel like getting in the Word. I don't feel like getting up and, 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 and getting to church and actually putting myself in a place where I can hear from God and fellowship with the saints and, and be connected to people who can help me grow in my faith. But I'm, I'm telling you, the rewards that God has in store for you as you take up these holy habits in your life are incredible. The spiritual strength, the spiritual wisdom, the, the vitality, the spiritual maturity, the, the increased ability for you to persevere when life gets really, really hard and it's tempting to quit. The courage and the boldness that's imparted to you, the, the closeness with God that, that you experience, all of that and more come through these disciplines. It's God's work, but we cooperate with Him. And I'm telling you, if you're not convinced already, it is so, so worth it. You may think about it like this. You may think about all these biblical disciplines, and there's many, many more than we're going to have time to cover in this series. There's whole books written about these. But you might think about them as tools, tools in the hands of our loving, all-powerful Heavenly Father aimed at your and my transformation. Now, something that's really important that we didn't get to last week, I didn't have time to say this, but I want to squeeze it in here. These are lifelong disciplines. You need to write that down somewhere. These are lifelong disciplines. In other words, these are not just for younger Christians or, or new Christians or those who are weaker in their faith or, or struggling in their faith. Even. These are for everyone, and these are disciplines to be lived out throughout your entire life until God calls you home. In other words, you're never going to get to the place in your Christian life where you know, you don't need to practice these things. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not like, you know, you're never going to get to a place in your life where you're going to say, oh, yeah, you know, that, that eating thing. I used to be into the whole eating thing. In fact, I could eat with the best of them, sometimes three meals a day, sometimes more. Sometimes I go back for seconds and thirds. But, you know, I, I just don't, I don't really need to eat anymore. Well, guess what? You're going to be dead pretty soon. Right? You need to eat. Or, or you might say, I, I, I'm kind of beyond the whole breathing thing. You know, that oxygen, it's so overrated. I mean, I, it's good for a while. And when I was younger, I, I kind of needed to breathe more than I do. But I don't, I don't really, I've grown since then, and I don't need to. Do, well, that's ridiculous, right? That's absurd. But guess what? Some people do that with the Christian faith. They do that with the Christian disciplines. Ah, uh, you know, I, I used to read the Bible. I used to be pretty hungry for God's word, in fact. But, you know, I just, I got busy, and I, I, I grew, and I, I, I think I know enough, and, and I don't really need to dig into God's word as a, as a lifestyle like I, like I used to. I, I don't pray as much as I did when I was a young Christian. You know, I feel like I got, I got, I got a firm foothold in the faith. And I don't, I don't, you know, I used to really be, be I used to really be, you know, committed to gathering with the church and, 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 and getting in a small group and serving with others. I used to be all into that, but now I'm kind of, you know, a lot of people do that. And I'm telling you, these, these disciplines, you need them we, we, just like we need to eat, just like we need hydration to live and oxygen to breathe. Listen, you'll never get to a place where these Christian disciplines are unnecessary. Hear me, as your pastor who loves you and cares about you in every possible way, but most of all your soul, if you want to be a strong Christian, if you want to be a growing Christian, if you want to be a joyful Christian, if you want to be a committed Christian, if you just don't want to skim by and limp over the line of heaven when you get to the end, if you want to finish strong, if you want to be able to stand when the enemy assaults you and attacks you and tempts you and when the world squeezes you and pressures you, to quit, listen, if you, you, you need these spiritual disciplines because I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. Without them, it's only a matter of time before you begin to unravel spiritually. It, it's, it'll happen. And we, so we need these so much. So this morning's focus is so important. We're talking about the holy habit of Scripture. I'm talking about reading God's Word, but even really deeper and beyond that. I'm talking about not just reading it, but feeding ourselves intentionally on the truth of God's word, um, studying it, memorizing it, 
meditating on it, not just a verse a day and on with my life, but I'm digging in and I'm saying, God, what, what do you want to say to me? And so I want this message to be as practical as possible. And I've just been praying. I've been praying this week, and even as I knew this was going to come up, I've been praying today even that, that God would, would do a, a mighty new work in your heart. Some of you, we need that new work done in our hearts this morning where, where God just, I just pray that he'll take what is shared here today and he'll use it to consume you with an unwavering desire to spend daily time with him in his word. How many of you know it's one thing to make an initial commitment, you know, to step across the line of faith initially, and that's such an important step of faith, no doubt about it. But it's one thing to make that initial commitment and to say, I want you to be Lord of my life, Jesus. But it's quite another thing, and this is what God calls us to, it's quite another thing to order my life in such a way and, and to intentionally prioritize my life and even sacrifice some things so I can have it to where he can be Every day, Lord, right? He can be the Lord of my everyday life, every area of my life. That's what he's calling us to because you understand, it's so easy. Unless we discipline ourselves, unless we take up these holy habits God is giving us and promising great reward if we do, it's so easy to get swept along in your daily life, is it not? And just we got our routine and we got our places we go and Monday through Friday we know what's going to happen and we come here on the weekends and we do all this stuff and it's so easy to forget what this is all about. Like, hey, this is all for him, amen. I'm living for him and my life is aimed at one thing, to bring God the maximum glory possible and to connect as many people as possible with the Savior who changed my life before I breathe my last and go into eternity. That's what I'm here for. And it's so easy. I know it's easy for me. Maybe, maybe you're not struggling with this at all, but it's easy for me even to get conformed to the patterns of this world and lose sight of the fact that my life is, I'm not just to be a Christian, but I'm, I'm to be living in absolute surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, amen, for His glory in every area of my life. That's, that's what He calls us to, and that's, that's for everybody, okay? That's why these are for ordinary people. So, Here's, here's why the focus today is so important, because nothing, nothing will bring you back into alignment with who God is and what he desires to do in and through your life better and more powerfully than daily time in the word of God. Now, there's lots of reasons, right, that people give for not being in the word of God. If it's been a while since you've been in the word of God, you know how easy it is to let a whole week go by and then a whole month, and then we look back and we're like, wow, I haven't really, and if you're here we're not condemning you, and we're so glad you're here. I, I'm praying that God will do a fresh work in your heart because I've been there. I've been, and I needed that touch of God, and so I'm praying God will, and I know he wants to do it. But let, let me just share some common reasons. Maybe these are your struggles. Maybe this is your experience, and God can help you overcome these things. Here's the first one. Reasons people give for not being in the word of God, not prioritizing it in their daily lives, not making it a holy habit. Number one, it's not interesting. It's boring Right? So-and-so begat so-and-so, and so-and-so begat so-and-so, and so-and-so begat go and so and then they, 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 what on earth? And it's like, what, what does that have to do with anything? And then they, they read one passage like that one day, and they're like, no thanks. It's not interesting. It's, it's boring. And I, I would just say this. Sure, there's some parts that you have to wade through, and, and there's some parts that you may not find inspired. Even though it's all inspired, it's all God-breathed, there's some genealogies in there. They're there for a reason, by the way, but you may get to those, and it, it's not inspiring. You're like, oh, that's nothing. and you're right. It doesn't have anything to do with your daily life, but it's there for a reason. But here's the bigger picture. Here's the bigger issue. When you discover, listen, when you discover the treasure treasure that God has given you, that you hold in your hands, I, I'm telling you, it, when you understand what the, the message of God here and how he wants to use these words to shape your life, and I pray you'll, you'll get that in your heart before you leave here today, this is gripping. This is amazing, the, the, and the stories come alive to you, and you're like, this really did happen, and so I, I don't know if that holds water so much. Here's maybe one that's a little more legit. I think this is definitely more common. I forget. I forget. This is a very common one. You know, I, I get up in the morning, and I intend to read God's Word. In fact, I hear a message like this, and man, Monday morning, I'm fired up. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to spend a half an hour or more or whatever, and I just get distracted. How many of you would confess to that? Okay, you're all in the sermon now. 
All right? Honesty with God. How many of you, keep, just put your hand up on any one of these, how many of you would say there's been times in my life where I very much wanted to, I in fact intended to get up and spend time in the Word of God, um, but instead, you know, I got all wrapped up in my computer and my work instead. How many of you have ever done that? Yeah, I, got, I just said, let me just finish this one thing, and then before you know it, oh my goodness, it's, it's, it never happened, right? How many of you have ever got up in the morning and you very much intended to get into the Word of God, but instead you got into your cup of coffee? And then you start looking around your house and you're like, oh my goodness, let me dust this off and let me, let me just vacuum this. And, and I forgot to put that laundry away and look at the sink full of dishes. Let me just load the dishwasher real quick. And then, ah, I'm late for work and I got to go. And, and it never happens, right? Nobody's ever done that. How many of you have ever intended to get up in the morning and spend time with God in his word, and man, your heart was like, speak to me, God, but instead you got on your phone. Hands up, everybody. Liars, you liars. You will, No, there's no way that only that many have done that. Uh, listen, I've done that. That's one of the dangers. That's why I like to read out of the, when I spend time with God, I like to actually pick up a physical Bible. I'm so grateful for the technology and the easy access we got to God's Word, but this is one of the dangers of having it on your phone because if you're like me, like right now, I've got like 23 uh, notifications right now just since I've been up here. Like blip, 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 and all this. Let me check this social media. Let me, oh, then I got this email. Let me answer that real quick. And before you know it, it's noon, right? And you're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> now I've got my day, and I'm tired now, and I, it just never happens. So we, we got to get over that. Um, I forget. Here, here's, another, here's another reason. I... Um, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Can I just confess to you? This is, this is probably going to be something you'll wrestle with the rest of your life. There's still things I look in. And as long as I've been following the Lord, and as much as I've studied, I, I'm, just, I'm just a normal person too, and I have to think these things through. And there's still parts of God's Word that I read. I'm like, what on earth? I don't, I don't understand that. But guess what? There's so many resources out there, so many good tools. If you just spent and invested 15 minutes and 20 minutes, but what a lot of people do is they just shove it aside, and they, they get all consumed. And here's what I want to warn you against. Don't get all consumed and obsessed and, and discouraged by the few verses or chapters or passages that you don't understand and push it away and say, I can't understand the Word of God, and instead focus on and align your life to the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of verses and passages that are easy to understand, amen, and that are clear and plain as day and are relevant to your life. But we, we forget about all those, and we focus on, I can't understand this. And let me just encourage you to flip-flop that. Focus on the ones you can understand There'll be stuff you can't understand. Take that, put it up on the shelf for a while. Don't, don't get discouraged. And, and lo and behold, you'll be reading another passage somewhere a, f- a few days or a few weeks later or whatever. You'll be in a Bible study. You'll be in a small group, and someone will say something about that. You're like, ah, oh, that's, that's that. And, and you'll, you'll have that knowledge and revelation. It's, it's a wonderful thing. So don't get discouraged about not understanding. And then probably the number one reason that people give for not being in the Word of God is simply this, too busy. I'm too busy. And we're pretty plain spoken here at J.C. Naz. Can I just be blunt with you? As your pastor who loves you and deeply cares for your soul, that is a totally lame excuse. That is a totally lame. Do not even bring that to me. You know, you, I mean, I, I love you, and I'm going to tell you the truth. That it, it, listen, if, it, if, you are too, if I am too busy to get into the Word of God, guess what? I'm too busy. I'm too busy, and, and my... If I'm too busy, if I say I'm too busy to get in the Word of God, my priorities need a serious, serious evaluation because my life is out of whack. It's jacked up. If I'm a Christian, can't find time. What, are you telling me? Are you actually telling me that you can't find time in your 24-hour day to spend time with the creator of the universe, the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise God, and find counsel and guidance for your life? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying that you don't have enough time in the 24 hours that God's given you to, to, to get to know better and build a relationship and find out how to honor the very one who gave his life for you on the cross? Is, is that what we're saying? Well, I don't know, man. When, <laughs> when you put it like that, that's, that's well, yeah, exactly. That's, that's what we're saying, right? 
So, so again, we're, we're not into judgment here at J.C. Naz. We're into being truthful. Sometimes the truth hurts, but here's where I want to turn the corner now. I want to help us move past some of those obstacles. I want to help us get beyond some of those barriers that are, have been tripping us up, maybe for some of you your entire life, and you're like, I, I'm just so discouraged that I can't make this a habit. Listen, God will help you. So we want to get into God's Word and for it to become a firm habit in our lives because, again, when you really understand the, the, the gift, the treasure that God has given you in his word, you, you will never raise those excuses again. You'll never try to offer that to God as a reason for not being in his word, okay? So let me quickly show you part of the message here. I want to just show you pictures from the word of God about the word of God. It's amazing. The Bible is so visual. It, it gives us all these metaphors about what the word of God is like, and it, and it helps us understand um, how the how, how it's such an incredible impact in our lives, our everyday life, okay? And then I want to share a, a very powerful story that I know will touch your heart, inspire you. And, and then I want to kind of share a practical plan to help you live this out when we walk out of here in a few moments. So first of all, here's the first picture. Turn to Jeremiah 5.14. If you've got an actual Bible, you just find Isaiah, kind of right in the middle there. Isaiah, Jeremiah, table of contents is totally in play. You can always use that. You don't have to be like this whole spiritual Christian that, you know, you don't have to hide it. and You know, just, just look at the table of contents. It's okay. It's in there for a reason if you can't find it. Um, so Jeremiah 5.14, here's the first picture. Therefore, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. Because the people have spoken these words, I will make my words in your mouth. So he's talking to Jeremiah. I will make my words in your mouth a fire, a fire, and the people the wood it consumes. And then over in Jeremiah 23, 29, God says a very similar thing, is not my word like a fire? So you don't have to be a seminary graduate or a biblical scholar to understand. God's word is like a, a fire, right? It's like a fire, declares the Lord. So, so God's word is like a fire. It's this idea of, of it's consuming. It's, when, I get, when I get up and I read this, it's purifying. It's refining. It kind of Burns away all the shaft. It, it's, it's not to be treated lightly. Ever had fire blow up in your face? I have. Burn my skin off. Burn my, it, was, it was awful, right? I respect fire. I mean, I don't treat it lightly. And, and listen, here's nothing else about fire. It absolutely consumes and vaporizes any obstacle in its path. And, and so you've seen those four fires out west, and, and maybe you've been through one. I don't know. Um, and I can, I can, every one of these pictures, I'm telling you, I can think back, I can think back to specific experiences with God and how he used this word, like his word, like this. And, and definitely with this one, um, I don't know how many times I've gone to pick up God's word and had my mind all muddled over with distractions and, and cares of the world and, and, and these emotions and, and just preoccupied, maybe even obsessed over all this stuff going on in the world or in my life or on the news. That's probably not going to matter a month from now, let alone for all eternity. And, and I pick up this word and it's like, wow. And God's word just burns away all the unnecessary clutter and gets my attention. If my heart's right, if, if I'm intentional, that is, and I'm open, and, and he gets me back on track with him and what really matters and what's really going to last and, and what I should be giving myself to. That's the idea of God's word like a fire, okay? God's word's not only a fire, it also pictures it like this. God's word's a sword. It's a sword. This is a great one, Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper, it says, than any, than any yeah, than the sharpest two-edged sword in this translation, double-edged sword in some other translations, same idea, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. Here's a real sobering phrase. It exposes, the word of God exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. In other words, it can get into places that no, nobody else's words or nobody else's actions can get into. That's, a, that's an amazing statement. When I, and and maybe, maybe that's another reason some people do not read the Word of God, because they know intuitively or they've experienced a little too much of God exposing my innermost desires and thoughts. How would you like to have your innermost desires and thoughts exposed right now and flashed up on the screen? Oh. <laughs> That'd be terrifying, right? We'd all we'd run out of here and never come back, right? So maybe. Um, um, but, but that's what the Word of God. But listen, God doesn't do it to humiliate us or beat us down. He does it out of love for us to transform us, right? Because He wants us to be a part of His eternal plan 
on this world. So in this world. So it, it's like a sword. Um, and the idea is that, um, well, we, we do this, right? We, we, when we're dealing with issues in our own lives that need change or we're, maybe we're helping a friend deal with issues in their lives that need attention and need rearranged or, or transformed, we, we tend to do this. We tend to beat around the bushes, you know. We tend to beat around the bush. We tend to kind of just hang around the fringe. We, we tend to kind of deal with the symptoms and all the superficial aspects of that. That's really not the, the issue, right? It's not the heart of the issue. Um, but, but God's word is not like that, amen? Everybody say, God's word's not like that. It's not like that. It, when God deals with the issue, when God speaks, he gets right to the heart of it, man. He drills down and, and he gets beyond. I mean, he goes right through all of our excuses and rationalizations. And he's like, just right to the heart of, of what really needs to be changed and dealt with in our lives. It's really even not so much a sword. It, that's, I know it says that, and, but the, the intention behind that is really um, more like a scalpel. The word of God in the hands of God is like a, in, with the spirit of God empowering, it's like a scalpel. It's like a spiritual scalpel in the hand of an expert surgeon. And it just cuts away all the attitudes and all the excuses and all the impure thoughts and motives and desires and wrong ambitions and, and all those things that just kind of keep us from really, really, I mean, really reflecting Christ to our watching world who desperately needs to see an authentic picture of Christ, who we need to be ambassadors for Jesus, and, um, and that's painful, amen, can you admit that? That's painful. When you read the Word of God, you're like, you know, uh, you read this Word, it says, um, um, don't complain about anything. Ah, <laughs> that's like really painful because I've done that this week, and, and when I get to this murmuring, complaining about issues of our world, and, and I'm, I'm just telling you, there's some things going on in our world, if you're watching and paying attention, it'll drive you crazy, right? Like, I can't, I, I, I can't believe this is happening. I, uh, what world do we live in? It's Ill, easy to get sucked down in the pit of all that. But then the word of God, right? You pick it up and you're like, well, God, help me. I, I need encouragement. It's like, <laughs> and it's like, ooh, man. Maybe, maybe I just need to focus on, I don't need to focus on the, the politics and the, and the issue. I just need to focus on my heart, right? Maybe God's got some, maybe God's using this, maybe. He's using this to refine me and, 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 and do some surgery on my heart and, and, Although the cutting and the convicting and the challenging that comes through God's word is painful and uncomfortable, and sometimes we want to push his hand away, um, we just have to remember who God is, right? We have to remember his nature. He does it all out of perfect love for us because he wants to transform you. He wants you to look just like Jesus and talk like Jesus. Like, and so you can win the world because his desire is that none would perish. And so instead of pushing it away, you know what we ought to do? When we open up God's word and it just, it just cuts. We ought to say, God, whatever it takes, God, just, just work on me. God, just, just man, would you, would you just lay me open, God? Just, just whatever it takes, God, speak to me, whatever you need to say. God, I'm listening. I'm your servant. And my answer, by the way, is yes. It's yes. Before I even read a word of this, I'm going to say yes to you because I know you're good and I know whatever you ask me to do is good. And so God just lay me open and God cut away all the, the, the cancer of, of pride and arrogance and, and, and selfishness and, and the wrong desires and, and whatever it is. Um, we ought to just say, God, just, just get it all, God. Just, just get it all. Do your work in me. And so every day, man, I come to him like that. So it's a, it's a sword. It's a scalpel. You want to know what else God's word is like? It's a, it's a fire, it's a sword. But here's another one, back to Jeremiah 23, 29. We learn there that my word is like a fire, but then the second half of that, he says, um, and, and declares the Lord, and like a hammer, like a hammer that breaks the rock. How many of you have ever experienced God's word like a hammer? Nobody, a few. I definitely have. On our regular occasions, I mean, man, there's, the truth is there's been times in my life when I had my stubborn will set on something. I know you're never like this. You never do this. But my heart was so hard in a certain area. But then you pick up God's word, right? And when you come to it in faith, like these are the very words of God. And, and when you come to it actually seeking him and wanting to know and, and wanting to be changed, you pick this up and, and this very relevant, powerful word just, bam, just, just breaks the rock. And he, and he pulverizes, he reduces it to just, just ashes, right, just powder so he can mold it and shape it and, and so he can bring about his good, pleasing, and perfect will 
in my life. That's God's word as a hammer. Just, just a few more, okay? I'm going to take these next two together because I think they fit and they speak to one another. God's word definitely connects them. So here it is. God's word is like milk. Milk. Who pours milk like that, by the way, anyway? I don't even know. You know, I found that picture. And <laughs> like my six-year-old pouring milk in the morning for a cereal. You know, that's crazy. So OCD kind of comes out in me. That's, that's um, anyway. But it's like milk. And we all understand this. I love this. First Peter 2, 2 says, like newborn babies crave. It's an important word. Not just, not just want, but crave it, right? Crave pure spiritual milk, milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. This is a really great analogy because we all understand it, right? We all get it. We all understand this picture. Ever seen a baby crying out for milk? Ever seen a baby craving the milk, and not just once a day, but several times a day? It's, it's an amazing picture, and it's amazing how God designed this, right? That, that a mother's milk, and I understand, I get it, that not everybody can nurse their baby or, or chooses to nurse it. So we got other things to feed babies on, formula, and that, that's okay. But I'm just saying, like, the milk is designed in such a way by God that it has everything that baby needs to thrive. And isn't it incredible? I was kind of thinking about this again this week and thinking back to our children. And when they were born, they don't, they don't just feed on the milk for a few hours after they're born. Not, not for a few days, not for a few weeks, but for months, right? For months and months and months. I mean, it's nothing but milk. And you're like, how is this baby living? You know, they're just drinking milk because that's all they need at that time. And so like a newborn baby who needs milk and, 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 and only later grows up and gets solid food, if you're new in Christ, the Bible calls you a, a, you're born again, right? And when we first enter into that relationship, you're an infant in Christ. You're, you're just a, a baby, and, and you need, like a baby needs pure milk, you need milk as a young believer. You need it so desperately. You ought to wake up in the morning, and you ought to be crying out for the Word of God. Just like, I can't wait to get up and get this open. And you ought to be craving it and desiring it and, and looking for it and making it a priority it's so vital, but as good as that is, the scripture makes it absolutely clear, we can't stay on the milk, right? I love milk. I still drink milk today. I can polish off a gallon of milk quicker than anybody. I love milk, but, but I can't, at my age, I can't live on a diet of milk. That would be very, very unhealthy, and we need more as we grow up in Christ. So that's why the word of God also says it's milk, but it's also like solid food. It's, it's, there's, it's meat, okay? Hebrews 4, 12 says, and, and he's challenging the believers here who kind of should be beyond the milk diet, but they're still, they're like newborn babies even though they're mature followers of Jesus. And he says, you have been believers for so long now, you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you, again, the basic things about God's word. You are babies, this is not a, a compliment, you are babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. So the word of God is not just milk, but it's, it's like this. It's like this piece of meat right here, right? And that's wonderful, all right? But, but not just that, right? It, it's actually the word of God is more like this. <sighs> Perfectly cooked, medium rare steak. Don't be bringing that medium well, well done stuff in here. Don't be bringing that, all right? This is not the way God intended steak to be eaten. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's okay. But, man, you look at that, and you're like, that is attractive, right? Uh, maybe we've got some vegetarians in here. We love you. It's okay. You focus on the potato. Focus on the potato. If you're a vegetarian, vegan, whatever. And, and, but the steak, man, mo most people look at that and say, that's very attractive. And, and then when we cut into it, it's perfectly cooked and perfectly seasoned. And you're like, when you eat that, you're like, I want some more of that, right? Man, i got to have this again. Where can I get some more of this? And, and, and my heart, though, let me tell you, my heart is so heavy, though, for believers that I run into, Christians that I run into, that are simply trying to survive on milk. They're, they're on a, they're on a, they're, spiritually speaking, they're not a baby anymore. Spiritually speaking, they're, they're, um, they're school age, or they're in junior high or high school or college, or maybe they're middle-age adults, but they're still on a diet of a baby when it comes to feeding on God's word, okay? So we got to move beyond. We got to get to the deeper stuff. And that's why being in worship is so, that's why being in a small group is so important. That's why getting up and, and getting disciplined about being in the word of God is so important. Here's the last one I want to share with you. And then I want to share a very heartfelt encouragement. I love this one. God's word is a lamp to my feet and it's a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. Psalm 119, 
is, is the most comprehensive chapter in God's Word about the Word of God. It's incredible. You ought to just devour that whole chapter. There's so much in there. That'll give you such an amazing picture and appreciation and desire for the Word of God. But it says in Psalm 119, 105, your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How many of you here this morning or how many of you listening online right now can think back to times in your life where plans you made failed? Or you, you tried something and, and you, you started to go in a certain direction and you ended up in a dead end. And maybe it was very painful and, and it, there was a lot of consequences involved. Or, or maybe you had ambitions for something and it blew up in your face. Well, why is that? Why did that happen? Probably lots of reasons. But, but a large reason, the most common reason, is that we as believers experience those things because we're trying to operate in darkness. We're not making our plans. We're not living with a biblical worldview. We're not, we're, we're not consulting God's word. We're not taking time to wait upon God and get his answer, to get his counsel. And we're not operating with a biblical worldview, as I said. And, and so God's word, though, is so wonderful. It's a, it's a lamp to my feet. It sheds light on the things that I don't know about and I need revelation about. It's a light to my path. It, it shows me where this is all going and what really matters and where I'm ending up. And, and, and it's not much, and sometimes I want more, but, but God is faithful. If we'll follow this, he will lead us where we need to go. Just take the next step. Just take the next step. God will reveal more, and you take that next step. I'm just telling you, the more time you spend in here with God and his word, the less time you're going to spend stumbling around and stubbing your toe and hitting your head on things out there. Amen? The more time you spend in God's word, the less time you'll spend stepping into holes or even worse, walking off the edge of cliffs. Because I've seen, I've seen God's people do it. Just walk off the edge of cliffs because they're not following. It's just devastate so much, con so devastate their family. And yes, God can forgive that, but we can avoid the pain of that. We don't have to, we don't have to fall into those traps, especially that the enemy sets for us. So I want to show you this video here in just a second. Let me set it up. This is a, it's a powerful video about a group of believers just like you and I in China. And, and it really talks about the persecuted church. But what I want you to lift out of this is even in the midst of their awful circumstances and, and the political pressure from their government, I want you to pull out, glean out of this and take with you this morning. Their, notice their hunger, their passion, their desire for the word of God and their willingness to say, we'll, we'll do whatever it takes to get the word of God into us, okay? So I want you to take a look at this video, please. They were sitting there, all 22 of them, and I looked around and I said, now, if we get caught, what will happen to me? They said, oh, you'll get deported in 24 hours and we'll go to prison for three years. I said, you're kidding. How many of you have been in prison for your faith? Out of 22, 18 raised their hands. I thought, no way. I looked at him and I said, you, you 22 people, how many people do you oversee? Because they were all of these small group leaders, underground church leaders in the Hunan province. I said, how many, if you counted up all the people under your jurisdiction, how many would it be? And they counted them up and they said, T little over 20 million. I said, what? See, we forget there's 1.3 billion people in China. This is crazy. Well. I had 15 Bibles and I passed them out. Obviously, seven didn't get them. And I said, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1 and we're going to read it. And just then, one lady handed hers to somebody next to her. And I thought, hmm, interesting. Well, we turned there anyway. And as we started reading it, I understood why she gave it away. She had memorized the whole thing. She just recited the whole chapter. When it was done, I went over to her at a break and I said, you, you, you recited the whole chapter. She says, oh, yes, I've memorized many chapters. I said, where did you memorize many chapters? She said, in prison. I said, you have much time in prison. <laughs> so I said, but don't they confiscate the Bible? And she said, yes. So people bring in scriptures written on pieces of paper, and they bring it in. So I said, but then if they find that piece of paper on you, won't they confiscate that? She said, oh, yes, that's why you memorize it as fast as you can. Because even though they can take the paper away, they can't take what's hidden in your heart. I thought, wow. Well, after three days, you fall in love with these people. 
And when it was done, I, I said, how can I pray for you? I'm going to go back to America. And you guys have been just so wonderful. How can I pray for you? They said, you know, Wayne, you guys can gather like this whenever you want to in America. We can't. Could you pray that one day we'll be just like you? And I looked at him and I said, I will not do that. Big, incredulous eyes looked at me and they said, well, why? <laughs> I said, because you guys rode a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than an hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat not only here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people don't often come back. In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles, and you memorize them from pieces of paper. I will not pray that we become like uh, you become like us, but I will pray that we become just like you. They were sitting there, all 22 of them, and so, I looked around uh, and I said, now, if we get caught, what will happen to you? Yeah, that's so powerful. Amen. And this is not a political statement, and I'm not trying to dredge up fear in your heart, but if you think that what they experience now, and most believers experience about the world, could never happen here. Maybe not been paying attention, okay, and, and not been reading the Bible, because it, it can happen. It can happen anywhere. But here's what I really want to get to this morning. I pray what God will do more than anything. I've just been, I've been praying for this. I've been calling out to God for it, that what God would do this morning before we get up out of these seats and we go into this world or we log off online if you're listening right now, just pray that God would put in your heart a deep, just consuming, unwavering desire for the Word of God. Just to, just to make prioritizing and reading and studying and meditating, meditating and consuming this and, 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 and just aligning your life to it. Just the, just the passion of your life. Just the priority of every single day. I'm telling you, there's nothing nothing that'll help you more. There's nothing that'll transform you more powerfully into what God has called you to be and his purposes for you than, than making time for the word of God. You can begin again. You can start fresh. You can start fresh today. You can start fresh Monday. Just, 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 I mean, not just reading it. I don't even know if I can express it, but just getting in there and just, just feeding on the word of God and devouring it and consuming it like a crazy starving person. Just feeding on it like you're very life depended on it because guess what it does it absolutely does and so my, my, my heart and, and, and what I want for myself what I've been praying for myself during this time of fasting and seeking God is that he'll, he'll just consume me that I'll, I'll just yearn for this more and more and I'll consume larger volumes of it more and more and, I'll, and go on to the meat of God's word just, just for you to get in here and just I think the greatest thing in fact that could happen every believer here is that you can get up leaving here just with not only a desire to read it and a commitment to read it, but uh, when you read it to actually believe that what you're reading here really did happen. And then you read it and you're just, you're just have this overwhelming desire to say, God, speak to me. These are the words of life. These are your God-breathed words. This isn't the words of man. So God, speak to my heart. And God, I'm listening. Your servant is listening and I'm ready to obey. And, and then when you read it, you find yourself in situations in life and, and decisions to make and the path is winding you you find yourself thinking like a person in here and you find yourself just saying what what would you have me to do God and what would bring you the most glory right now and what would most advance your kingdom I'm, I'm dead to myself I don't care about what I want what I are what would most advance your kingdom how are you do you want to use me God in the brief vapor of a life that I have here and God, what would what would He do? And 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 what would she do? And and what what did what did Jesus what would Jesus do? Right? And and what have believers done throughout the centuries when they've been faced in very testing and challenging times? That's what I hope. You pick up the Word of God, and when you pick up the Word of God, you read it. You won't just read stories and and and, and you know, print.
principles, you'll say this really did happen. I mean, when you get into the Word of God, you're like, you read about a guy named Lazarus, a real guy who was so sick he died. And they sent word to Jesus, and, and Jesus got the word, but he stayed where he was two more days. He had a plan. He had a purpose, even in a really ugly situation. And he finally went, and he encountered a family and all their grief and pain, and he ministered to them, and he revealed himself to them, and then he stood before a grave. Amen? He stood before a grave of a dead man that they had lost all hope, and he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out of there! And they rolled the stone away, and guess what? Lazarus came out. And he was alive, and he said, get the grave clothes off of him and set him free. He's, he's good. He's alive. And, and you read that, and you're like, that really did happen. That really took place. There was witnesses, and even more than that, the God who caused all that to happen, I can talk to him right now. I'm praying to him. I'm, I'm calling out to him in my time of need, and I'm praising him. And that same God that caused that and all these other things, he wants to be involved in my life, and he's listening to me right now wants a relationship with me and he wants to give me his power so I can do his will on this earth. Amen. That's what I want. That's what I want more than anything for me and for all of us. I pray. I pray. You will look back on 2021 because of the commitments you made and because of the power of God. You will say, 2021, that was the year that God's word became a treasure to me like never before. That was the year that I grew in Christ's likeness like never before. That's the year. That was the year where all things became new and, and, and God changed my life like never before. Amen? Amen. If you want that, would you stand your feet this morning? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. There's many, many good plans. You can get up in the morning. Don't worry about figuring it all out. You version all kinds of Bible studies, get into a small group where you get with other believers and what are you doing and what, what, what have you found helpful and you can help each other and, and just start. That's what I say, just start. Just the passion that is building in your heart right now, just say, God, I'm going to act on that. I'm not going to let that fade away by lunchtime and I'm not going to take a nap and wake up and, oh, I forgot all about this. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act on this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a doer of the word, okay? And God's going to do amazing things. I'm telling you, if just those here today, if just those listening online would do this, I can't even, it just excites me so much. I can't even begin to describe the transformation that would happen in this church and the way we'd be able to impact this dark, rotten, corrupt, hopeless word and, and reclaim it for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Would you bow your heads for a minute? Father, thank you. I trust your people to you. I trust that long after this building is empty, your spirit will still be active and working in our hearts and reminding us of what we heard and what your word is to us and what you're calling us to, God. And so... Lord, I just, I just trust you, God. I, there's not enough time, and there's no way I can give specific actions to take at this time. You're just going to have to minister to your people through the Spirit, but I trust you to do that. You are faithful, and I trust your people to listen and obey when you speak to them and, and, and not give up, and, and that we wouldn't start yet another year and then in a month be, be off track. God, we would just go, and we would, we would go, and we would run with passion, and we would never look back in this area of our lives. Use this holy habit of scripture reading and consumption to transform our lives. I pray in the name of Jesus, keep your head bowed for one more minute, for one more prayer, okay? Some of you, the, the next step for you is not to start a, a, a habit of reading your Bible again or maybe a deeper one, but, but to come to know Jesus in a personal way. Some of you maybe, and a lot of people are in our world, they're confused about salvation very confused about how is it that I um, have the confidence of my sins forgiven and have the confidence that I will go to heaven when I die. We're all going to die. The truth of God's word is very clear. We're all going to die. We're all going to leave this world and enter eternity. All of us will live forever somewhere. We'll all stand before God and give an account. The Bible is very clear. Many people are confused about how, how do I get to a place in my life where I will go to heaven when I die and I'll spend forever with God. Listen, you can't work your way into this. You can't earn it. You can't go to church enough. You can't read your Bible enough. You can't give enough money to earn your way into a relationship with God, a saving relationship with God. It, it's like you trying to swim from the east coast of the United States and swim across the Atlantic and swim to Africa. You could never do that. 
you could that could never be done. You say, well, Pastor, I remember a guy who it did it. There's a there's a you could look it up. There's a guy, he he did it. Yes, he swam so many hours per day. Guess what? He stopped for the night and rested. And he had a lifeboat with him, and he stopped, and he had refreshment. And they took breaks, and and he had, it was an amazing feat. But he didn't do it. No one could swim that distance all on their own, all at once. It's too far. And I want to tell you this morning, church, that the distance between us as sinful people and God is too far. We could never bridge that gap. We could never cross that chasm. But guess what? We don't have to. Praise God. Because God himself came down to this earth in Jesus, and he gave his life on a cross to bridge that gap for us so that we could have a real relationship with God. It's not enough, though, just to know about it or just to, just to recognize that's true of it. You have to act upon it. You have to make a decision. I'm like, like a dying person, like a drowning person in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, surrounded by sharks and, and, and my destruction. I'm going to call out to God. I'm going to say, God, I can't make it. It's too far. I, I can't do enough. Would you save me, God? Forgive me. I've sinned. I, 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 and I want to know you. And I want to follow you. I want to give you that opportunity today. No one can force you. No one can make you do this. We're not going to manipulate you. We're just inviting you. I'm just saying, here's Christ, and on behalf of Christ, I'm inviting you to step into what many, many hundreds have already these last few years here at JC Nats. I want you to keep your heads bowed, and if you say, I want to pray that prayer with you, Pastor Mark, I want to enter into a relationship. I know I can't do it on my own. I've failed so many times, but I, we're not going to put you on the spot. We will not embarrass you. We're asking you to speak. And if you want that, would you just raise your hand this morning so I know who I'm praying for? Would you raise up your hand right now? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Would you keep your hand up, sir? Would you keep your hand up, sir, over here? Ma'am, you keep your hand up. We're going to give you a bag. One of our serve teams is going to find you and give you a bag. Just thank you for your patience. Right here in the middle aisle. Thank you. Praise God. Several. Anybody else? Anybody else? I need the Lord. I'm turning to him for the first time. I'm, I want to be saved. I want the assurance of my sins forgiven. And I want to begin a new life. Praise God. Let's all pray together. I'm going to, those of you who acknowledge this, maybe even some of you online who I can't see, if you're desiring this right now, I'm going to ask everybody to pray this out loud so we don't put on the spot those who raise their hands. Okay, so let's pray this prayer. Okay, this is a prayer of faith. The Bible simply says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is you calling on the Lord. You're not praying this to me. You're not joining a church right now. You're calling the Lord. You're trusting his word that you will be saved by believing in him, putting your faith in him. It is your only hope for forgiveness and eternal life. Let's pray this together. Father God, I turn to you now, and I'm so sorry for my sin. I've sinned against you broken your laws, but I ask you for your forgiveness. Wash me, cleanse me of all my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose again from the dead for me, and I believe you are the Lord and the giver of life. I put my faith in you today. Fill me with a holy boldness. Fill me with courage to live for you all the days of my life. I belong to you. You're my God and my Savior. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, that's reason to celebrate. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. God's still working. And I want to challenge you, those who are maybe a little discouraged, a little frustrated, maybe a little bit angry about everything you see going on, this is how you change the world, one heart at a time. You want to know what side we're on at J.C. Naz? We're on the Jesus side, amen? We're on the Jesus side. And we're all about proclaiming his kingdom and his love and that he did for us what no one else can do. Listen, those of you who raise your hand real quick, in that bag is some great resources. There's a CD in there. Would you listen to that as soon as possible? There's some really helpful tools and, and encouragement there to keep you growing in your walk with God. Don't ever quit. Don't ever look back. God bless you. It's been an amazing day in the Lord. Have a great week. See some of you back Wednesday for small groups. We'll see, see you throughout the week. Grab us. Contact us if you need some help, you need some prayer. We'd love to uh, involve, involve ourselves with each other throughout the week. God bless you. Have an amazing week. Take care.